Okay, so I am making this video to hopefully try to help explain um, the fundamental differences between a WAV file and an MP3 file. Um, whenever I deliver mixes to bands, I always send them in a as a WAV file. Um, just it's the highest quality you can get for a digital medium. Um, but that said, the file size is substantially larger. It's harder to download. It's harder to stream to your phone. Um, so bands get frustrated and they just want me to send an MP3 just for ease of access, which I get. Um, but I feel like a lot of people don't understand what you're losing when you convert from a WAV file to an MP3 file. So I'm going to try to explain in as simple a way as I can, um, why you lose what you lose when you convert it down. An MP3 is obviously a much f smaller file size, and to get it that small, it has to trim away a good amount of data um, to get it into a file size that is manageable. Um, so a lot of this information is going to be very fundamental, very day one stuff. Um, and I'm sure a lot of you have a great deal of knowledge about audio and audio engineering, but I'm sure there's a lot of people who won't have that amount of knowledge um, and who might not understand why this works the way it works. So I'm going to be getting very bare bones today. Um, so if this is information that you already have, that you already know, feel free to disregard it, skip ahead, um, whatever you want to do. This is just kind of a cool trick that I show people sometimes to explain to them what they're losing when they jump from a WAV file down to an MP3. So this is a song by my friend Kenny. Um, I just finished mixing it this morning. Um, and I've got a few different versions here. So this first version is a WAV file that I printed off of the session. Um, 4816, the, the standard. Um, this is literally the same exact file as this. I didn't even import it twice. I just duplicated this track onto another one, and I'll show you why in a little bit. Um, and this is an MP3 of the song from the same session. No settings were touched in the mix itself. Um, literally just printed it as an MP3. So if I'm getting very basic here, let's zoom in and kind of take a look at what a waveform is. Um, so basically what you're looking at here is it's a waveform. Um, and if you picture this horizontal line running all the way through all of these, if you picture that as your speaker at zero, not moving, not putting out any sound, not doing anything, these signals are transmitted electronically from your hardware to your speakers, telling them which direction to move. And if you zoom out a lot, you kind of can't really tell what's happening with it, but within a very small amount of time, that speaker is moving a ton. Um, picture it, if you will, like a tug, tug of war. So you've got a group of dudes on this side who are pulling in this direction, and then you've got a group of dudes over here who are pulling it on this side. So it's a constant positive negative signal that's keeping your speakers vibrating. Um, again, very basic. So, what you have between all of these files is the waveforms look generally similar. These two, again, are exactly the same. Um, this one looks pretty much the same. Um, very subtle differences that I can see here, but I'm sure a lot of people might not be able to. Um, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to just play a little snippet of the song just to start out with. Okay, so you get the idea. Um, and just so there's no question, I'm going to go through and play the same chunk of the song um, 
from the jump and I'm going to cycle through all of these different versions so you can hear that it's the same song. Um, again, these two will sound exactly the same. Um, this one will sound a little bit different. I'm not sure if you'll be able to hear that. Um, some of you will, some of you won't. So I'm going to just play it and cycle through the different versions. So as you can tell, it's the same song. Um, they're all lined up in exactly the same place. They're all moving the same way. So if you think about how I explained before how these waveforms are moving, um, so let's go back to the tug of war analogy. So this chunk right here, you've got this group of dudes over here pulling the signal that way, pulling it out. Um, and doing the same thing here doing the same thing here. So if you play both of these files at the same time, basically what you have is these group of dudes are gonna be pulling the signal out and these group of dudes are gonna be pulling the signal out the same way at the same time with the same amount of strength. So what should happen in theory there is the track should get twice as loud when I play both of them together. It's the same waveform but moving twice the distance because it has twice the amount of people pulling it in whatever direction. So I'm going to start with this one just soloed by itself and then I'm going to introduce this one as well and you'll hear the jump in the volume. And again, if you look, the volumes are the same. I have them ducked down so nothing clips. Um, but they're all pretty much the same level. That one's a little bit lower so I'm going to just make that even for anyone who's questioning that. Um, so if I play this... And then if I play it again and then introduce this one, you'll hear the difference. So as you can tell, it gets substantially louder. The mix doesn't sound any different, it just gets louder. Because again, it's got the same amplitude moving, it's got the same waveform moving the same way, but the amplitude is increasing because it's now twice as much. It's doing the same thing twice. So on that notion, if I take this file and we picture that tug of war game, so we have this group of dudes pulling this file that way, and we have this group of dudes pulling the file that way the same way. If I take this file and invert it, if I flip it upside down, what you'll see now is that the waves are inverted. They're flipped the other way. So on this track, you have this group of dudes pulling the signal this way and you have this group of dudes pulling the signal the opposite way at the same time with the same amount of strength. So if this little chunk right here is telling your speaker to move out that much in that amount of time, and this signal is telling it to move the opposite way, exactly the opposite, at the same time with the same amount of force, what'll happen is I'm gonna play this track, and again, it won't make it sound any different, it's just the opposite. So I'm going to play this track, I'm going to play this track, and then I'm going to play them both at the same time. So if I play this one, and then I play this one, sounds exactly the same. But if I play them both together, so I'll play this one to start and then I'll introduce the original and watch what happens. Nothing. 
So just so I can reiterate in case anyone's unsure why that is a thing, you have these dudes pulling the signal that way. You have these dudes pulling the signal the other way with the same amount of strength at the same time. That rope, that tug of, ro tug of war rope, if you, if you will, isn't going to go anywhere. So nothing comes out of the speakers. Um, so basically when you flip the phase on something like that, everything that is identical will disappear. Everything that's the same is going to go away. Um, and anything that is different between these two wave files, if you have a little bit of a signal here that's pulling it in a certain direction, but this one's pulling it the opposite way, but in a slightly different way, whatever those differences are, that's what's going to remain. Um, so again, anything that is the same will disappear. Anything that is different will be apparent. So now that we've inverted this one, I'm going to just go ahead and delete this guy. We don't need him anymore. So now we have our inverted wave file that again sounds no different on its own and we have our MP3. So since these are inverted, they look like they're about the same waveform, but they're they're not. Um, I'm gonna play these both at the same time. I'm gonna play the wave file by itself and then I'm gonna play the MP3. So again, same file. Now I'm gonna do the same thing and I'm going to introduce the MP3. And the only thing you should hear because it's inverted are the differences between the WAV file and the MP3. The only things that are not the same. The MP3 is a smaller file, so to get it to a smaller size, it has to trim away certain things as I said before. So the things that it trimmed away will be left in the wave file and everything that's similar with the MP3, you'll hear disappear. Sounds pretty terrible on its own, but that is essentially what they cut out of the MP3 to make it smaller. Um, and it doesn't sound like much, but there's a lot of really nice articulation in there um, between the snare drum, between the kick drum. Um, some of the reverb characteristics are a little bit different. Um, you can hear that like real energetic top end in the guitars if I play this section. It's a subtle difference, but it's very clearly there. Um, so let me see if I can find another section of the song. It's a little more slow and drawn out. So I'm going to play it and then introduce the MP3. So you're losing quite a bit of information. A lot of that like snare reverb is out of there. Um, all of that real like sizzle from the kick drum kind of rattling the snares of the snare drum and then the, the snare drum itself, um, a little bit of the cymbals. You're, you're losing a lot of that. Um, so, you know, that's, that's pretty important stuff in a mix to make it sound energetic and the more you convert these MP3s down again and again, whether it's sharing it with your friends or burning it onto a CD and then they pull it onto their computer, that compression happens every single time. So every time you do that, you're losing certain elements of your mix to make it a smaller file size. Um, so it's just something to be aware of what, what you're incrementally losing when you 
keep trying to make it smaller and smaller and hand it out to more people and more people. Um, so I hope this helped anyone who was having a hard time understanding why this is a thing. Um, and when people say that MP3s are terrible, why they mean that and what they're losing. Um, you know, mix engineers spend a lot of time getting that high end to sit nicely without sounding harsh, without sounding brittle. Um, and then MP3s take most of that out. It's kind of a shame. Um, so I hope this cleared up any questions any of you had. Um, and I hope you'll think twice about MP3s now. Thank you.